Speaker. I call Alfred Ngaro <coughs> in reply. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's an honour just to round off the debates and, and also to the speeches in the House. And uh, I, I do, I would like to respond though that uh, the um, the Honourable Maggie Barry um, was actually addressing an issue that had actually come quite some time. So it wasn't a bit of a stoush with uh, uh, another local ward member or a chair over in the North Shore. In fact, uh, this had been uh, in existence for some time. And as I said, there was a press release uh, by Phil Twyford in 2010. So this is a long-held issue of concern that's been going on for some time. So, um, so I think I just want to just acknowledge that first of all. Mr Speaker, one of the things I think is going to be important as we head to the Select Committee is also the wealth of Experience. And I can only speak for, for those that are on our side, but uh, Jamie Lee Ross here, uh, my colleague over here, he was a, uh, I won't say how old, but he was one of the youngest members in the Manukau City Council. So he served for six years ably in the Manukau City Council. And so that's right, he was, he did say he was shaving at that time, apparently, with a butter knife, uh, but it was, it was, it was a shave. <laughs> but, um, and he spent half a year with the Auckland Council prior to coming into, into Parliament as well. And, um, also, too, uh, my colleague over here, John O'Neill, who was uh, a councillor for six years uh, in Palmerston North and then became the mayor uh, for Palmerston North for seven of the, those years as well. Uh, our good friend Ian McKelvey, who was the mayor for Manawatu, some say for 100 years, but no, it was only six years. Um, so he was the mayor for Manawatu for some six years and was very ably led over there. Jackie Dean, um, she was the deputy mayor um, for, for Waitaki, I think it was, and, uh, and again, a wealth of experience. And Tolly, also too, the Honourable Anne Tolly, uh, who was also too uh, in council as a councillor, um, and for Napier, and then also to Pesita Sam Lotoinga, the Honourable uh, Pesita, uh, was also on the Auckland Council, um, and he was the uh, um, the member, uh, he was the councillor for Maunga Keke as well. Um, and also to, uh, who can forget the Honourable uh, Paul Goldsmith, uh, who served on the Auckland Council, and uh, he was, in fact, he was the chairperson for the community services. Uh, he did a well, he did a great job on community services. Uh, he showed lots of empathy um, for um, the communities in Auckland wide. So, Mr. Speaker, it, I, I, I mention uh, the experiences of my colleagues because I truly do believe that that's a wealth of experience that will be added uh, to this bill. Um, and to me, that's going to be quite significant and quite important as well. Mr. Speaker, we do look forward to submissions that will come forward. I, I do think that what has been raised also too is the potential under the uh, Local Government Act of uh, 2001, where potentially there, and uh, my colleague. Um, uh, Mr Matt Ducey talked about community boards and there is potentially situations there for um, some discussion and some conversation around that and I know that uh, Mr Seor also too talked about that opportunity as well. So Mr Speaker we, we think that um, we're looking forward to, uh, to the discussion and yes there could be more uh, supplementary order papers uh, that are in there um, and I just want to again just remind that uh, there was some comment about uh, the bill being a little bit sloppy with the supplementary order paper. It was an administrative era uh, that it happened and uh, so supplementary order paper uh, where it has clause number six is just to ensure that at the commencement of this bill we're not going to have a series of by-elections up and down the country and I think that's really important uh, as well uh, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker there's uh, not much more to say but just to say that uh, we look forward to uh, the, the ably chaired uh, local government and environmental uh, select committee. Um, we do hope that uh, there will be, I know that in the green speech that uh, there was thought that there wouldn't be much uh, submissions, but I think what it will uh, do, Mr Speaker, is again begin to ask the question uh, around the Auckland Council. I do know that there's been wide uh, conversation and concern at times around, um, I suppose, how effective the Auckland Council has been. <laughs> Uh, the engaging of seven territorial authorities to come together and why, while we've said that there's been some savings, there could be some concern at the, as a whole uh, whether the leadership of that council has actually continued to, to pay dividends and make a difference. And I think um, it's not a judgment call, but it is a challenge I know that's, that's, uh, that's there as well. So, Mr Speaker, um, uh, I look forward to this bill, uh, going to select committee, to, to sitting in select committee, to hearing the submissions and look forward to returning the bill uh, back to the House uh, with the hope that there will be widespread support across the House uh, for this bill uh, as it comes back to and hopefully to, to gain the royal assent uh, to, be, uh, to then be enacted into law as well. Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Yeah, yeah, Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The motion is agreed to. Local Government Auckland Council Amendment Bill Number 3, first reading. The question is that the Local Government 
Auckland Council Amendment Bill No. 3 be considered by the Local Government Environment Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. A call on members, order of the day number five.